Imagine this, you log into UCAS on results day and you see that you haven't got your firm choice and you haven't got your insurance choice. Your heart drops, you panic and you think your future is over. But what if I told you clearing might actually be your golden ticket to an even better future. You might end up at a better university or one that you enjoy more, taking a better course or even going for something you hadn't even considered before that is such a better fit for you. So before you spiral, refreshing UCAS every three seconds, watch this video. Hey everyone and welcome to Miss Estrick Biology. I hope you've had an amazing summer, but the time has come for me to do the A-level results day preparation video. What you can do beforehand, on the day, and all about clearing. So stick with me all the way through to the end because I've got so many practical tips to make this day go as calmly and smoothly as possible, whatever the outcome is. So let's begin with clearing and start with the basics. What is clearing? Clearing is how universities fill any spaces they still have on courses. It opened on the 5th of July and it runs until the 20th of October, but most people use it on or after results day based on their A-level results. You don't actually have to wait until the 14th of August to have a look what's already available because there are some courses that didn't fill up already. So some spaces are there, but most spaces come about when people don't get the offer they were given. And that is going to change consistently after results day as people accept and decline offers. So who can use clearing? If you applied after the 30th of June, if you didn't get any offers, if you declined all your offers, or if you don't get the grades for your firm or insurance choice on results day. So if you are entered into clearing, you don't have to do anything to actually enter it. It's automatically done on results day. When you log into your UCAS hub, you will then have a clearing ID, which means you've automatically been entered into clearing so you can now pick an alternative course or university to apply to with the grades that you did get. So here's the step by step of how clearing works. Number one, check your UCAS hub. As I said, if you are automatically entered into UCAS, you're going to see your clearing ID. Number two, search courses. The UCAS website is the most accurate and up-to-date website to check which universities still have spaces and for which courses. These change by the hour though, so keep checking it throughout the day because as I said, as people reject or accept different offers, what is available is constantly changing. Step three, contact the universities directly about any courses that you've seen that you like the look of. There will be numbers really, really obviously appearing on all of the university's websites that you call about any of the courses that you've seen through clearing. Be prepared that they will ask you for your A-level results. They might want your UCAS number, your clearing ID number as well. They probably won't ask you for another personal statement though or an interview but maybe some might but it's very very rare normally you just tell them the grades and that is enough to get the offer at this stage number four get the offer if a uni wants to offer you a place they'll tell you and they'll make that available for you to accept on UCAS hub so number five add that clearing option on your UCAS hub you can only add one at a time so make sure you're sure before you add it but you do often get given 24 to 48 hours to decide so it is worthwhile calling multiple universities to see which will hold a place for you for a course you're interested in that you now have the grades for. Okay, let's rewind a little bit. Before results day, what could you be doing to prepare? And there's not really much you have to be doing, but here's a few things to consider. Double check that you do know how to log into UCAS because it's probably been a long time since you did it. So make sure that you still know your username and password. Check that you can actually log in before panic kicks in on the day. Number two, have a plan B list at the ready. Hopefully you get the grades that you needed for whatever you want to go on to do next. But if you don't have a list of maybe potential other universities, or other courses that you wouldn't mind doing if you don't get into your firm or insurance choice. Or consider, are you happy to change your plan to a different course or university? If not, are you actually gonna take a gap year? And if that's the case, start to think about what could you do that is worthwhile during a gap year and that maybe will earn you a little bit of money. And number three, stay calm, get support and decide what you want to do on the day. And by that, I mean, do you want to go in by yourself or do you want to go in with family and friends? Do you want to open your results at school in front of 
for everyone or would you rather grab them and run away? Think about what you would feel the most comfortable doing and make people aware of that so on the day you don't feel pressure to have to do something different that you weren't expecting or you didn't want to do. Okay, let's get into results day. Let's imagine it's results day, it's time for you to find out how did you do. Depending on what time your school is releasing the results and letting you see them, you might end up getting your results before you can check UCAS Hub or you might be able to check UCAS Hub before you get your results. Either way, I'd probably check UCAS Hub as soon as I woke up just in case it's been updated and you can find out if you got into your universities or not and if you've got a clearing ID or not. So you get a bit of an idea about how you might have done in your A-levels. So yes, that is what I did when it was my A-levels. It was quite different then because it was a long time ago, but you could actually log into UCAS at midnight and they would let you see there and then. So that's what I did. Midnight, I logged in. So I knew before I even went to sleep, I'd got into university. So I knew I had at least, I think it was ABB, that's what my offer was to get into that university. Next, you need to get into school or college to collect those results because I'm guessing most of you have to go in in person to collect it. And if you don't, it might be it's going to be posted or you can check online, but maybe work out what you need to do on results day and what time you can go in. Number three, if you are entered into clearing, start calling universities and start checking courses that are available as soon as you can, because these are offered on a first come first serve basis. So as soon as you can start looking and deciding, get calling those universities. And linked to that, you might want to make a note of each person you've spoken to. So if you do have to call back, you know who to ask for. Next on the list is try not to panic. I know that's easier said than done because you can't really control if you're panicking or not, but try and take deep breaths and remember if it hasn't gone as you had hoped, you didn't get the grades or you didn't get into university, then there are still lots of options that are really, really valuable through clearing. And there's also the possibility of remarks and gap years. And celebrate, that's a big one on the list. If you've got the grades, if you got into university, celebrate. If you didn't, still celebrate because all of that hard work has still resulted in you completing your A-levels. And this is now the end point. So celebrate all of that work that you did put in. Now, just a few pointers about if you didn't get the grades and maybe you were only one grade away from what you needed to get into your university, then you should consider a review of marking. What this means is you ask the exam board to review the marking of your paper, whether it did accurately match the mark scheme. It's basically what they call a remark, but it's called review of marking. Particularly, I'd recommend this if you are only one to four marks away. If it's more than five or six, it's pretty unlikely you'd go up. But if you don't mind risking the money, because that's all you're risking there, then go for it. If you're close to the grade boundary below though, do not go for it because your grade could drop. But if you're a couple of marks away, then it is probably worth going for a review of marking, particularly if your university place depends on it. And if your university place does depend on it, do the priority review of marking because that comes back much, much quicker than the non-priority review of marking. If you've got any questions on that, drop it in the comments and I can give you some more personalized feedback on it. But the best option is to talk about it with your exams officer or head of sick form on the day if you need to. So some final thoughts on results day. I've mainly focused on what if it doesn't go to plan because that's what most people want to hear about. Because if it does go to plan, you can go and celebrate straight away. But if it doesn't go to plan, it doesn't mean it's a failure. In fact, over 30,000 students got places through clearing last year. And many of them ended up even happier at a university or a course they hadn't previously considered and they ended up loving it. And it was a much better fit. Plan B doesn't mean it's going to be a worse plan than plan A. So best of luck everyone and if you are starting university this year don't forget to check out my completely different video that I did on learning to cook for university and I did this entire tomato pasta sauce for you. I hope you found this video helpful and best of luck everyone. I'll be keeping my fingers crossed for you all.